Welcome everybody to another episode of the Radiantly Awakened podcast. Today I am here with G.S. Youngblood and I'm so excited um, for so many reasons, which we will definitely get into. G.S. coaches men in relationship on how to live, love and lead from their masculine core. He's the author of the book, The Masculine in Relationship, which lays out a three-part blueprint for developing more masculine energy. And his work pulls um, in principles from psychology, spirituality, martial arts, tango, meditation, and BDSM. And his book has just been an absolute game changer for me and so many people I know. I was actually talking to my ex on the phone today and he's like, can you please tell him that his book changed my life? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, I cannot wait to get into this. So yeah, um, GS, would you like to introduce yourself further? Um, well, first, Emily, let me just say thanks for having me on. It's, uh, I think this is gonna, going to be fun. And I, th I think you laid it out there you know I'm a, I'm a coach and an author and I, I i do this because i've been there and back you know i've been through relationships i've been through a marriage that crashed and burned and I've, I've done a lot of things the wrong way and and over the last 15 years the things that i've learned you know eventually coalesce coalesce themselves into two books and i want to share that with men so they don't make the same mistakes that that i did and, and uh they can they can benefit from what i learned hopefully and, and hopefully save relationships because that's that's ultimately what it's about for me is not only saving relationships but if there's kids involved which there often are um and i have the opportunity to maybe help that family stay together like that's what lights me up every day with what i do mm, yeah powerful i've just got chills already <laughs> All right, so, good start. Yeah, tell us. So you, so you mentioned. So you've been there. You've been back from there. So, um, if you'd like to, could you tell us a bit more about you? How you got into this work? A bit about your story. Yeah, I, I, I was married way back when, and for about ten years, and and had three wonderful kids out of that marriage. But it ended in a. In a pretty bad ball of flames, you know, in a, in a, in a particularly painful way. And I, I, by that time I was, I was an emasculated man. I would say I was spending most of my time kind of doing gyrations to keep her happy, uh, which really just served to drive her farther away. And I didn't understand these dynamics between men and women, between masculine and feminine. And so you know, as, as with many things in life, you know, pain is your motivation. You know, when you really do go through hard times, that's what motivates you to change. And so I really threw myself into um, finding a new way to be. And I didn't know what that was going to be, but I knew it had to be better than the state that I was in. And so uh, I did a lot of work with, with in the authentic relating world here in mm. San Francisco uh, for many years. And that was amazing. I discovered I had emotions. I discovered I could express those emotions and be real about what I wanted or maybe how I was feeling insecure in a particular moment. Um, and that was great for a while. And then it it started to feel like something was missing. So I, I happened to discover the work of David Data. And David's really the, the luminary in this field of masculine feminine. And it's how a, a lot of guys get their entree into, into this, this body of knowledge. And so I, um, I, I trained with David. I trained with one of his primary students for a number of years. Um, and over that whole time, I, I was observing principles and patterns and, and one of the things I like to do is, is observe and, and codify those into a, a set of principles and then a structure for those principles that make sense to guys. Mm. And that's what led to the book because as, <laughs> as the volume of my notes grew, I was at some point, I'm like, wow, I could probably put this together into a book. There's enough here. And so uh, that's exactly what happened. And uh, uh, it's been it's been great. I mean, I, it has really helped a lot of men and, and men are reaching out a lot and, and talking about how the, the funniest thing I hear is, man, I think you wrote this book exactly for me. <laughs> <laughs> and what that tells us is that you know, for us men, it's like we're not alone in this. And I think we men tend to be lone wolves. Everybody gets that. Mm. 
And we think we're alone in our, in our dysfunction within our relationship. And we're not like there's, there's a lot of commonalities. There's a lot of patterns and it's not, it's not that you're a failure. It's that a lot of people are failing at these dynamics until they really become aware of them. And then like the light bulb goes on because this is not rocket science. You know, most people can get this and when they get it, they're like, Oh, I can actually harness these, um, these dynamics of masculine and feminine to create more, more polarity, more juice, uh, more um, function rather than dysfunction. And things change. Relationships can change. So I, you know, to your audience, I say, if your relationship is rough, I suggest you take a look at these dynamics because it can be better. It really can. You don't have to despair that it'll, it'll never change. So that's that's kind of you know coming full circle. That's kind of uh, the background that I bring into this conversation. Yeah, totally. That's amazing. I didn't actually know all of that, so that's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just hearing like um, I'm just thinking somebody might be thinking like maybe they haven't tuned into my podcast before because we've spoken about these masculine feminine um, dynamics. But maybe if you want to like explain a little bit more about this like masculine feminine polarity work just maybe give us a brief overview until we go um um before we go a little bit deeper into it yeah yeah it's it's one of the things that's that's difficult is you know masculine feminine like, i don't know how it is in australia it's probably a lot more <laughs> relaxed but here in the united states you know everybody's all jacked up about these these notions and they and they can read into into it things that we don't actually mean. Mm -hmm. But if you just think of masculine feminine as, as sort of directional and receptive, those are two words that I've started to use that are a little less charged. You know, masculine energy. First and foremost, it's a lot about directionality, whatever that means. And, and I think the the word speaks itself, so it gives the flavor of what we're talking about. Now, if you if you zoom in a level, what I think masculinity is is laid out in this masculine blueprint, the three-part blueprint that's in the book. Respond versus react, provide structure, and create safety. And of course, we're going to go into those here in this conversation, but men can look at that as a diagnostic. It's like, am I living in my masculine core? Am I bringing a directional energy to my life? Um, and you can use the three elements as sort of a diagnostic. And so it's, again, respond versus react is that quality of, of its stillness and groundedness rather than maybe overt expressiveness mm. provide structure that's the directionality that's the that's the structure of how we'll do and where we'll head mm -hmm. that's the directionality and then create safety is more about the relational space of creating safety in your partner i mean emilita you know this is as well as anybody you know that the feminine nervous system is not going to be open and flowy mm -hmm. if you don't feel safe if you don't feel financially safe if you don't feel physically safe and sure as hell if you don't feel emotionally safe mm -hmm. So the man's ability to, I, and, well, the masculine's ability to create those safety, not that it's his job to do that for her as a, as a enforced role, but if he wants her open, if he wants her in her playful feminine energy, he has to bring that to the table. So, so that's the masculine. And then on the, on the, on the other side, you have the feminine, which I don't ever claim to be the the authority on the feminine. I mean, I think I speak better to the, to the masculine side of things, but there's that openness, that receptivity, that, um, that uh, expressiveness. Uh, can, it can uh, manifest in a nurturing quality. Um, and, and when you have two people that are in their masculine, like if my woman, <clears throat> you know, she's maybe been doing some, some project all day or something where she's kind of, you know, having to take the lead for herself in this. And she brings that energy home. It's always a little, mm -hmm. you know, between the two of us when she's in that energy. Now, does that mean she can't be in that energy? No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying when she comes home and we want to be intimate, and I don't mean physical intimacy necessarily, just, you know, emotionally intimate with each other. To have two people in their masculine energy doesn't feel that great. It's going to feel kind of flat, like roommates, really, that's mm -hmm. what it is. And so you want somebody in that directionality, you want somebody in that receptivity, and that's the dance. Um, you know, that's where the you know the dance of tango. I don't know if you've ever tangoed, but it's it's a strong lead follow. And if you don't have that structure, it it doesn't it doesn't flow. And there's no opportunity for surrender for the the whoever wants to inhabit the masculine pole to 
to surrender into the into the 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 directionality that the masculine league brings. Mm -hmm. And in our modern world, it doesn't have to be the man in his masculine. Like mm -hmm. you can be switched or you could be switchy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's room for all of that. Um, it's just that you want one lead and you want one follow, and that's how the juicy dance plays out. Now, of course, we we need to go into more details, but I'll I'll uh, I'll pause there for a second. You said something. I love everything you said, but this one thing that just popped out to me, um, which I found to be an interesting sentence. You said surrendering into the directionality. Can you elaborate on that? On the surrendering into the directionality for the masculine? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the the classic body of knowledge here would say that the feminine, you know, which which only includes part of oneself. Mm -hmm wants to be relieved of that burden of figuring out what did what's happening next mm -hmm. you know and somebody who's who's more of a feminine essence like they can go into their masculine all day long at work for instance or maybe with kids but there's there's always that urge to return to that natural state of feminine energy which is more receptive more responsive mm -hmm. and not have to make the decisions and 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 just say okay when when there's a strong, competent, masculine energy leading and saying, hey, I think we should do this. Mm. And that's that direct reality of masculine. So it's just a, it, it's a gift that the masculine can give to the feminine to bring that direction. So she can, she can, by her choice, not compulsory, but by her choice, can say, okay, I'll follow that lead. And yeah. there's a, I mean, you can speak to this too. Oh my God, I have so like, much to say. <laughs> yeah, there's like a body relaxation when somebody's in charge. And it doesn't even have to be, I mean, this is a common principle in the world. It's just mm -hmm. like you get a group of people, somebody needs to be in charge. And it feels great when you're like, okay, I'm just going to follow this person because they seem to know what they're doing. And that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about here in one-on-one -on -one polarity of intimacy is you have somebody surrenders and somebody who leads and it feels good to both. If you're mm -hmm. both trying to do it, it starts to feel like butting heads. It starts to feel like a lot of work, yeah. quite frankly doesn't mean you can't be switchy like she's gonna lead sometimes there's gonna be sometimes where the guy just says baby i know you got this just tell me how to help here mm. it can be switchy like that as long as somebody's in the in the in the in the masculine pole and somebody's in the feminine pole at any given time in this domain of intimacy mm. yes yes i love that and i mean i i for one have had issues in the past with like following people like following the masculine um surrendering to somebody else's direction i think this is like you know we could probably speak to the like trauma the nervous system like all of that and recently i've had this experience of like meeting a man and just play like playing with these energies and like having him do things like plan out like this is this is in um spain right so plan out exactly where we're going what um what train we're gonna take um what restaurants are good around that area like just random things like that and like it was it was such an unspoken thing actually where i was just like okay well i just felt safe in that sense that he was already doing it he was already doing the research i just had to literally like hold his hand and come along for the ride and i'd never really experienced that level of directionality before in my life and oh my gosh he got a completely different side of me that i don't think any other man has ever seen before in the world and and the other thing is he like planned out food which is a very 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 special thing for me so like just just with that like the trains i, I literally i i remember there was this one moment where I think I was on my phone, like I was zoning out because I was just holding his hand and he was just leading. And I, I softened so much. I was just like, I was like mush. I was like, you know, I was like the most happy version of myself. So that, that, um, experience of directionality and leadership was just fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a couple of things that pop up for me in that, in that anecdote. One was that, um, well, I love this part where you said, like, nobody else has ever gotten this part of me. Mm. And I imagine, and, and I'm going to go on, out on a limb here, Emilita, but okay. I imagine there's people who have experienced you where maybe you were kind of more and you're like, like you were probably a little scary to them. 
And you're, and I'm contrasting that with this, like, I'm imagining this really delightful, light, playful version of yourself that this guy experienced. Mm -hmm. And two people would describe you as very differently, you know, two very different people. And what that illustrates is that the other person's way of being Oh, it can really affect your way of being. And, I, and I'm really trying to get this through to men. If your woman's, you know, sort of feeling chronically irritable, it might actually be your way of being. And that's less blame than it is like the key to unlock the, the puzzle here of like change your way of being men. And you're going to get a very different version of your wife. So all these stories you have about your, my wife's just irritable and she's crabby and what happened to her. Those are all stories about a state that he's probably generating. And, and so I love that your story illustrated that to the men, you, the men's way of being in, in this model that I'm talking about can really impact and bring you a very different version of your partner very organically just by how you are being. Um, and that's really what, that's one thing that, that jumps out a lot for me uh, yeah. in the story you told. Yeah. Mm. And I love that the way you, you lit up as you told that story. <laughs> I'm seriously, I'm still smiling. Um, but what I will say as well, like, and I just, I think it's important to cover both sides. Like, yes, the men, they have, they, uh, how do I put it with being politically correct? <laughs> you can't with these topics, can you? Anyway, so I'll do a disclaimer at the beginning. Anyway, so <laughs> it's like, yes, yeah, there's there's work to do on both sides though. So for me, like if I was still holding on to a lot of my trauma patterns as a woman and and having this shield up of like absolutely not like having somebody um surrendering to somebody is disempowering, like having this story going, then we would have never been able to create that that um yeah that energy between us because I would have been very resistant to it. So, I mean, definitely both sides. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I try to keep a strict focus on really pounding on the men. Like this is on your shoulders, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right. It's, it's yeah. For the women, it's like, how can you clear out resentments and trauma so that you can bring your full heart to the relationship? Mm -hmm. And, and, I, I do get women, they ask me, okay, what can I do on my side? And, I, and I, my answer is very simple. You're going to get upset about things. It's like, that's inevitable. It's just life. Mm -hmm. When you do bring the cleanest expression of your heart, mm. you know, it's not blame. It's not toxicity. It's not you, you, you. It's, it's, uh, it's just it, from the heart. It's like, I'm hurting. And you wouldn't use that exact words. You'd explain what, what you're hurting about. But the energy is like, maybe I'm hurting. You know, and that's a very clean expression of your heart. And it helps us men because one of the things that's really tough for us men is your disappointment. Mm. Your disappointment in us just goes to the jugular for us. And so when your trauma comes through your expression in the form of toxicity, it really feels like blame. It feels like disapproval. It feels like we're not competent. And then it really shuts us down. It's not your fault, but it, it does shut us down. And then we get defensive or stony and all the dysfunctional things that guys do. And so, mm. you know, in this dance, the, I, I'll say it again, the cleanest expression of your heart, don't give us anything to defend against, mm. you know, by throwing daggers at us, just tell us your state. That tends to open guys up a lot, tends to yeah. get much more um, effective results. <laughs> I love that. The cleanest expression of your heart and then like leave the toxicity and don't give us anything to defend against that sentence. Don't give us anything. That's awesome. I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> Thank you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the three parts to the blueprint. So we've already, we've already spoken about like providing structure. I think like what, why are these important? Why are these the three parts to the blueprint, the respond versus react, providing structure and creating safety? Yeah, I just, um, you know, we've always had a masculine feminine dynamic. It was just more compulsory before. And it was expected that, the, the, you know, the man would be in charge. And, and I mean, we all get that. We know the narrative of our civilization. Mm -hmm. so, but, you know, that's not reality anymore, this sort of compulsory. So I, it, it was me trying to come up with, okay, what are the... What are the elements? What are the essences? What are the energies that 
really characterize masculine versus feminine. And so that, that was what it was. And this is, I mean, you, you say why it's, I mean, it's, the answer is a little silly. It's like, well, cause that's what I think is really the core of masculine energy. If you strip out all the compulsory who's in charge and, and any kind of domineering, I think those are the things that actually feel good to the feminine nervous system. I think those are the things that actually create directionality in a way that allows for uh, everybody, both both sides, power, autonomy, sovereignty, and and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's my. It's a very satisfying answer, but it's it's like that's because this is what I think it is. This is um, my offering to the world as as one template, one model for masculine behavior. And I and I think it, you know I justify that empirically, just having lived a life, having done all this training in masculine feminine dynamic and having talked with a, a lot of, of, of very feminine women about these dynamics, you know, it seems to the, empirically validate the model uh, mm -hmm. as it's laid out. Yeah, absolutely. And like recently, how do I put it? Like, I feel like if one of these pillars is lacking so so obviously with me i've read the book i've referenced it again quite recently um in preparation for our podcast and and at the time i was seeing somebody so i mean like you know i had i had the blueprint there i had these lists of things to contemplate within this connection and it's so funny because there was like so many parts that i'd never experienced before within this connection that i was finally like getting to experience but then when there wasn't like one, for instance, um, the respond versus react, when there was like reactivity, it didn't really matter how much um, like he was doing so well in let's say the other pillar of like providing structure. It's like, I closed, I had no other, like my, my nervous system just closed up. Like my heart closed. I couldn't, I couldn't engage when there was emotional reactivity. And I had to like, you know, thank, thankful for the, thankfully for the work that I have done on my nervous system and reactivity myself, it's like pull away and do my own processing before I could come back and engage from that space of being in my heart. Yeah. So yeah. it's just really interesting. Yeah. Uh oh, I missed the question. What's the question? Oh, there was, there wasn't, I thought you were about to say something. So I stopped talking, oh. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, like I was just really just noting like how, if, how I suppose reiterating how important they are, even from my perspective of, you know, you could be providing structure, creating safety in certain areas, but let's say the emotion, you're emotionally reactive. It's like, it's so yeah. important to, gotcha. to really yeah. understand all of them. So yeah, all three it's, 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 you know, it's a three legged stool. You take one way and it falls over. Yeah. The, the, one of the ways that I described something very similar to what you're talking about in the book is you can't over identify with any one of these. Mm. Um, if you really over identify with, with respond versus react, you're gonna be the stony man because you're, you're kind of like, I will not react to anything and I'm a mountain and um, and you know, it, part of it feels sort of masculine, but, but there's no emotional permeability. There's no engagement. And eventually the woman's like, you know, knock, knock, is anybody in there? You're mm. so like the mountain that I can't feel you. And you as a woman know that that gets old in like five seconds, right? Mm -hmm. If you over identify with provide structure, that's usually more of kind of the alpha or the asshole energy where you're like, I'm going to provide some fucking structure here for everybody and you're going to do it my way. And, you know, I'm providing so much structure. There's, it, there's a rigidity to the system. And again, that can, at first that can be enticing. Like I think a lot of women get caught in this trap where like the alpha feels powerful and you, there's an attraction there. And then at some point it gets old because you're like, is there any space for me in here? Like, it feels like it's your way or the highway. Um, there's so much rigidity and that ends up not feeling good over the long term. Mm. And then if you over identify on create safety, that's kind of the nice guy archetype where mm. you're like, you're going to make everybody feel so safe. Okay. Everything. Okay. And how can I, you know, how can I give up my needs to make you feel better? So if you over identify on create safety, then you end up kind of as the nice guy. I like there's the male apologists um, that I won't even go into, but so if you, if you kind of over identify with any one of these, then you turn into kind of one of these archetypes that isn't a holistic masculine, you know, being, 
And that's where I think you're speaking to is it does take all three because even even either whether you're over identifying with one or just missing one, as you were pointing out, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work. The, the three legged stool falls over. I love that analogy. I love how you um, separated them into the stoic, the asshole, and then the, the nice guy archetypes. I love that so much. I never thought of it that way, but it's yeah. perfect. It actually ties into some of the other questions I have. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so much there. Um, one of the questions I had is like, I know for myself and like a lot of my friends and so many people I speak to, there's so many women that want their men to improve and the way they go about it is the women and even myself it's like okay well what do i do to improve oh, okay i do yoga oh i go to therapy i do this and then they try and get their men to do the exact same thing and it's like well i suppose the question is how can women inspire their men to like step up into this without going into the mothering controlling do it my way energy Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you say this, it, is it sort of men kind of building their masculine core or just working on the relationship dynamic? Uh, which yeah. one do you mean? I mean, all of the above. All of it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it starts with a clean expression of the heart mm -hmm. and, you know, talk a little bit about where, what's painful, you know, what is truly painful. And it's, it's not going to feel good to the guy, but as, as we talked about before, if, you, if, if there's less blame, if it's more about her and what lights her up, I mean, it's great when you say, when this happens, it feels really good. And I feel my heart open and I feel my body open. And, um, and, you know, for guys, anytime that she mentions her body opening, his, you know, his attention is going to be like, what, what do I need to do for that? So it's, it's, you know, really sharing what opens you and trying to find the successes. That's a great way to do it rather than say, here's what's lacking. It's like when this happened, I felt so open and I, all I wanted to do was wrap my arms around you. So starting there and, and with very clean expressions of the heart, with affirmations of what's working as examples of what she's wanting more of. And then, you know, you, there's also the hard parts of like, and, and then, I just notice when you when you argue with me the way you you're you know you're you're so forceful about it that I feel kind of bullied a little bit. And mm -hmm. I know and I love you honey it's just it really shuts me down and makes me feel very hurt and um and I want to open I want to be your little kitten but I feel closed. Mm -hmm. And so you know I don't know how well I did as as you know sort of impersonating the feminine expression but <laughs> you know, there's just a lot of heart in it. And unfortunately we get into our pain and we need to, which is, you know, has our trauma right underneath it. And then we have to discharge that through blame. Mm. And if we can really notice really masculine and feminine, but if we can, in, in this case, we're talking about the feminine. If you can notice when you're trying to discharge that energy, that's just too much through blame just know that that's going to shut the conversation down. You're not going to get the results that you want. So I think, I think those are some of the things that I would, I would offer humbly to, to, you know, um, the feminine to express, to inspire their man, um, just more tactically and less on the emotional side. But I've had women, I get a lot of women who read the book, like, and then give it to their man or men that they know. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, They'll, they'll get it, they'll highlight it, and they'll leave it around the house and, and not say anything like, you need to read this book and, you know, uh, here's where you're deficient. It's just, hey, this is an amazing book. It describes a dynamic, dynamic that lights me up, and I thought you might like it. And then you leave it on the coffee table. You don't push. <laughs> that guy's going to pick it up eventually. If he's not pushed, he's going to pick it up. I love that you said that because, I mean, I know people who have had it where um, – the, they, I think that maybe what's happened is they've just said to their man, like, you need to read this, you know, and, and they just have not, they've just like, it's just been something that they're just, oh yeah, yeah, I'll do it eventually, yeah. you know, and it just yeah. never happens. So I love, I love the way that you put that. <laughs> oh, here's one tip I'll give. I did just, I did just come out with the audio book. And so it, it's sometimes an easier way to get the guy to, to read it. If you can just listen to it in the car on the way to, you know, the grocery store. 
I love it. I love that so much. Um, I want to talk about your um, embodiment book as well, because um, I know that in the book, one of the things that you mentioned is if you're not going to do these embodiment practices, there's really no point in like doing anything else in this book because it's all about actually embodying it. So can you talk more about that? Talk more about why that's important. Yeah. yeah. Look, all of our dysfunctional behaviors, you know, especially in relationship, come from a jacked up nervous system. And I think people are, even the layman is starting to get that. You know, we all kind of understand the nervous system gets hijacked. We all have trauma that, that sits, you know, underneath our awareness every day. And it affects us even in our adult life. And, that, and, it, and it causes our things to trigger really anxious reactions in us. And Despite your commitment and your determination to be different, somehow we keep doing the same stupid dysfunctional patterns. And in, you know, 99% of the cases, it's just, it's just that you haven't actually dealt with the problem. You had a cognitive intention to be different, mm -hmm. but your nervous system undercut you every time. And I always say primal smashes cognitive every time. You know, you can have all the intention in the world, but it's, it's a primal dynamic within you that's causing you to have a dysfunctional dynamic. So when you, when Emilita, you get mad at me and I start to defend, it's because you're, uh, you're upset with me triggers my nervous system and probably, uh, you know, not feeling good enough or fear of abandonment. And then that gets triggered. And of course I'm going to go defensive because I can't tolerate this anxiety that arises within me. In anxiety, I'm going to kind of shake my hands here to mimic the, you know, the ang the ang the energy of anxiety because it comes up as an energy and as we're like, mm, and it's discom it's it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so we have to discharge that discomfort. So now it's all about discomfort and the and the the alleviation of that. So when I get defensive. I think it's going to make the, my subconscious believes it's going to make the, the discomfort go away. Because if I can defend and change your mind, you'll stop being mad. Mm -hmm. And then I can relax because you're not mad at me anymore. And then the discomfort will go away. Like that's the whole chain of events that happens. Mm -hmm. So I can't change you and make you not get mad at me. But I can increase my own capacity for that discomfort. So as this starts to arise... I've trained myself, just like a runner, just like any, any athlete, you've trained your body to handle the physical intensity. I've just trained my body. I, I mean, people that do embodiment have trained their body and mind to handle this, this discomfort of this energy. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't feel so shaky anymore and it actually starts to come down because I have a lot of capacity for emotional intensity because I've done my embodiment practice. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where embodiment comes in is, is any man, really any woman too, but I just, my audience is men. Mm -hmm. You can, you can do these daily embodiment practices. You can increase your, uh, you do two things. One is you bring your attention more down into the body rather than the thoughts, which mess with you. Mm -hmm. And the other is that you increase your capacity for discomfort, emotional intensity. And so when that comes, you just have more capacity for it. Just like you could run farther after you train to run for a marathon, you can just run farther. You have mm -hmm. more capacity. It's no different here. So that's really the, I mean, let's go more into what embodiment is, but that's, that's kind of how embodiment relates to these dynamics of, of interrelating that we've been talking about so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the book, you, there was a few embodiment practices that you mentioned. So what's the difference with this, um, with your other book? Um, I think you said it's called The Art of Embodiment for Men. Like, does that just go a bit more deep into like different types yeah. of practices? Yeah. Yeah, it goes a lot deeper. It takes chapter 10 and, and blows it into an entire book. So uh -huh. yeah, we're, it, it goes a lot deeper into the principles. Actually, I didn't really get into the, the principles in, in the masculine and relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just due to space it being one pair uh, one chapter so yeah i go deep into the principles and and what embodiment is and why it's important and the subtleties and then i go into practices uh that you can do um and so i i'm, I'm really proud of the book i just it was the, these things that had been inside me for a long time mm. um in terms of things i had learned or created or codified over over the last 20 years um, so it was, it was a joy to, to write this book about a very narrow topic. And it is, it's narrow and deep. So it's not like the masculine relationship, which I think 
kind of gives the whole picture and then goes a certain amount of depth. This is, this is very deep on one topic. Um, but I will say this until I'm blue in the face. Uh, embodiment is the number one thing that a man can do to improve his relationship and to build his masculine core. It's the number one thing that he can do. Uh, it's had such a benefit in my life and in, in making me less reactive and, and having a lot more capacity for, for uh, interpersonal intensity. Mm. And, you know, with the nervous system work, it's like, yes, it benefits your relationships, but it benefits everything in your life. It's not just your relating, but that's a massive, massive part of it. It's everything, right? Like your capacity yeah. to just deal with business or whatever. It's yeah. like, it's not just going to impact just your relationship with, let's say your woman um, or your partner. It's like going to benefit everything. This is why I'm always, if you, if you guys listen to my podcast, always banging on about embodiment and nervous system work because it's been the game changer yeah 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 absolutely yeah i have a whole second line of my practice that i do around with corporate executives because i spent 20 years in silicon valley so i've got that background and i'm, I'm marrying the two mm -hmm. but working on executive presence using the embodiment work to um, work on their groundedness as they go into the office how can they have more natural innate authority inner mm -hmm. authority um, by having a more grounded nervous system. So yeah, I, I agree. It really applies to all parts of our life. Absolutely. There's like an essence where somebody has this grounded nervous system and they just like have that directionality and leadership where it's like even like subconsciously, no matter if you're a man or a woman, it's like, you're like, yep. I want to follow that guy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, I trust that guy, you know, or I trust whoever the person is, you know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's so true. It's like, I don't quite know why I trust him, but man, I just do. He just, he or she, yeah. Uh, just, just feel solid. They feel like they're, they know what they're doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. I want to switch it up a little bit. Um, you touch on this in your book and we, um, we touch on it a little bit. I like that bit. little wave, by the way, Emily. <laughs> Lou, you did. That was great. <laughs> um, oh, now I forgot what I was going to say. Yep. All right. Here we are. So it's regarding, um, it's regarding actually men like knowing what it is that they want and like understanding what they want and what their values are and what their desires are and actually going after it i know so many people who i feel like have in, in to try and do the let's say quote unquote right thing they've gone into a bit of that nice guy energy you know and and it's like they've lost touch with their desires and for that that just feels like so I don't know. It doesn't feel nice. And I've experienced this recently where, I mean, I was in my princess energy and I didn't even know I was in my princess energy. I was, I'll just say the situation actually. I really, uh, okay. I was, we were in a restaurant and he took the seat that I wanted and <laughs> I kind of, I was like, oh, I really want to sit there. And so I was like, oh, can I sit there instead? And he's like, oh no, I want to sit here. And I, I never had anybody do that. Every, every guy I'd ever been with would be like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no worries. And I got into my princess energy and I was like, I was like, I, I didn't sit down. I was like, I want to sit there. <laughs> I didn't budge. <laughs> and then, and then I finally, I finally, he was just like, no, sorry, I'm sitting here. And then I had to sit down and then we had like a full blown like not full blown, but I had like a moment where he's like, he, he kind of called me out and he's like, look, like I wanted to sit here. You can't always just think that you can get your own way. And I mean, it was, I, I was like, you know, I was holding two parts of myself. There was a part of myself that was like, Oh, I didn't get what I want, but there was a part of myself that was like, damn, that's hot. Like I respect that so much. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know where the question was. Um, Oh, I, let me I'll, let me just comment on that. I love yeah. that story <laughs> because it's it's like creating hot. And I think Esther Perel talks a lot about this. You know, creating this hotness in relationship. You you got to go to a dangerous edge, and that could have easily tipped over. I mean, he didn't. It sounded like maybe he didn't know you that long, so he wouldn't necessarily know where that could go. Mm. And so it's like it sounds like it tipped on the side of that's kind of hot versus what a fucking asshole this guy is. I mean, it was a bit of both. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of in the moment. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love that. I love that he had the balls to go to the edge like that. I wouldn't always recommend that for every guy, mm -hmm. but, but I think 
maybe something that let's see how I want to I want to tease this out. I think for the men, I, what I'd say is you can go to that edge. You're like, no, this is this is my chair, and and handle it like he did. And if if you don't want to go that full out, something like, hmm, well, you got to earn it, babe. <laughs> you know? Do, dance like I'm a little teapot right there, right here in front of me, or sit on my lap and come nibble on my neck first, and then I might give you the chair. So you can play with her and you without necessarily having to go all the way and, and really, because a lot of guys won't risk that. And so they'll just go to the nice guy. So if that's their only their two choices, like tough guy, asshole, you know, knowing what he wants versus just nice guy, of course you can have the chair. Like what's, neither of those necessarily is, where you want to be. And so you can play with that and create this erotic tension mm -hmm. where he's still giving you the chair. Maybe, maybe that was, you know, maybe that was the right thing to do, but he's going to make you work for it. And he doesn't feel like a pushover, like, okay, of course you get the chair and, and immediately cave in. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I threw that out, but I, I'll ask you, how would that have felt if he, if, you know, the guy had played with you a little bit? I think I would have liked it if it was done. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And it's funny because that was actually my question. I read, I re just wrote it down. I was like, where's that middle line between nice guy and asshole? And you just, you just covered it. But yeah, I'm like, I reckon that would go down pretty well. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think the principle there is you don't do anything reactively, right? Mm. It's like, oh, you, oh, you want it? Of course you can have it. It's kind of like, Mm. I receive the request and I immediately grant it. You know, it's there's no there's no buffer in there because it's 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 reactive mm -hmm. without thinking. She wants it, I give it to her. Yeah. So creating some space and then deciding how do I want to play in that space so that it's not compulsory and I do it out of choice. Mm -hmm. So it's I think as we even boil this down into more of the principles, it's like create the space between stimulus and response. It's something I talk about in the book, and Viktor Frankl talks about stimulus and response. How do I create play in there and choice? So play, choice, sexual tension, like in my space, how do I fill it in with those three things? That's, I think, the kind of the principle there. And whether he gives you the chair or not is, is within that realm of choice mm -hmm. and play and sexual tension. And that's what I think what I would offer to guys is take that model and then now, you know, how do you apply it to any, any given situation? Yeah, I love that. I really do. And... I have a question. So what do you think keeps guys or what, what do you think, where do you think this nice guy energy comes from? You know, like where, where does it come from? Why is it there? And how can people, like if they can see themselves yeah. in some of these scenarios, um, how can men start to cultivate more directionality and leadership in this, in this way, instead of just being in this, in this, yeah, you can have whatever you want, you know? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, like this reactive nice guy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's two different questions there. It's like, why are they nice guys? And, and how do they not become a, a nice guy? Mm. Um, my buddy, Dr. Robert Glover wrote the book on nice guy. It's called No More Mr. Nice Guy. I think most people know it. it's very popular. It's been around for 20 years. So mm -hmm. that's a great place to start. And, and he, he talks about, you know, nice guys give up their needs because they think that's what they need to make people want to be with them and like them and be, be approving of them. And, um, and that persists into adulthood and that creates the nice guy where they, we think if there's no conflict, you know, everybody will be happy. And that's true for a, like, a, you know, in terms of the, in the scope of a long relationship, that's true for a nanosecond. And then at some point, She's like, uh, this is a little too easy. At first, this felt good because it just felt very easy, and now mm -hmm. I I can't stand it. And I, you know, I'm sure you you, you agree with that. Mm -hmm. So that that's where nice guys come from. It's just they think that no resolution means everybody's happy and everybody's happy with them, and and then and then it's just the opposite. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you become something different? Nice guys are, are what they are because, you know, the, here's their radar and it, their radar is out there and they're looking for relational danger, looking for anybody who's not happy. And what I try to get the guys to do is, you know, like turn that radar on yourself. And then it's like, what do I want? What are my needs, my wants, my boundaries, my preferences? And that is a muscle that has atrophied for so many men. And so we really have to start to, to excavate 
in, a, in the inner world of what they want in any given moment. And I give them little, little simple exercises like, yeah, like if you're at work and it's lunchtime and four of you are trying to decide where to go, like decide where you want to go and say, I want to go to, you know, wherever, Subway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just even in the small things start to develop a preference because it, it, it even feels foreign there. You're like, oh. This is, feels, you know, this feels a little awkward. I, mean, I think I'm going to piss people off if I assert myself and mm -hmm. even where we're going to go to lunch. And so it's, I, I have them practice on small things and then start to build up in any moment. Like, what would you do if it were really up to you? Mm -hmm. And then I, what I do is I coach them in to how to express that because we don't want guys now to become, we're not trying to turn them into narcissistic assholes. Like we're going to, you know, we're going to the chicken place and, you know, it's my way or the highway. Mm. We're not trying to turn them into that. And so I have a, a principle I, uh, I call clarity plus inclusion. So it's yeah. very simple. Here's what I'm wanting to do. How does that land for you? Mm. Does that work with, or does that work for you? Mm -hmm. So I check in, you know, so if I'm out, if I'm, we want to go to dinner with, with my feminine partner and, you know, sometimes, I mean, I did this just over the weekend. I didn't even tell her where we were going. I just booked it and brought her to this great restaurant, mm. but I don't always do that. And so sometimes it's like, you know what, babe, I want to go to the Italian place. We talked about it for forever. And that's where I'd love to go tonight. How's that for you? Yeah. And she's got, you know, choices. She could say, great, thanks. I just would love to get on your ride and follow your lead. Mm. Or she might say, no, I just had Italian. I don't want that again. And that's mm -hmm. fine too. And then we, we do the dance, but I start with my own clarity. And that's really, that's the principle is, man, you have to get inner clarity about what you want. Even if you kind of have to force yourself because so many guys love to identify with the, um, yeah, I'm just an easygoing guy, you mm -hmm. know, and they use that to justify their lack of clarity both inwards and then as expressed into the relationship. And the women are like, oh, you know, they just can't stand it after a while. Mm -hmm. Yet he sort of has a little pride about being a, you know, an easygoing guy. And I really, boy, my clients, I really try to get that out of them <laughs> and sort of force them to have a damn opinion about things and then have a healthy way to express that. You know, there's a range of ways to do that. Yeah, totally. That's so good. I have a burning question. I know that we're, we're coming sh shortly up to time, but, um, so what if, what if somebody's in like more of that, like my way or the highway asshole energy, <laughs> what's, what's their like little tweak? Oh, it's probably a big tweak, but you know what I mean? Like if we had that example for the nice guy, like the things that you get them to start playing with, what would be the one for the asshole archetype? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, the, the 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 problem with the asshole or the narcissist or the alpha uh, ar uh, of those archetypes mm -hmm. is they don't tune into the relational space between you and this is this is really a big point in my work there is there's a lot of men's work which is about me as a man and standing st strong and upright but it's about me and it's but it hasn't included the relational piece yet so that's great if you want to hang out with the dudes and develop that cool if you want to be more successful in relationship you have to come into the relational field and that's that's kind of the phrase that i use for my work is the it's it's the relational masculine that we're trying to cultivate here mm -hmm. and that means i do have all the all those those elements of i stand upright i know what i want i feel solid i'm not reactive and then i reach out into my awareness into the relational space and say what's going on in the system between us mm -hmm. and you want the asshole the narcissist to see that their um, my way or the highway is actually painful mm. and that sometimes it's great but when it becomes more of a default mm. that's the, when it's kind of like that's the default it doesn't feel good and you don't feel you don't you don't feel validated as the feminine partner doesn't feel validated they don't feel included they don't feel honored and it starts to shut you down and those are you can again, have a very clean expression of your heart around that. You know, you just use nonviolent communication, which it's like when, you know, when you kind of forcefully tell me what to do, like sometimes it feels good, but when it becomes too much, I just, I notice myself shrink and I want to, I want to get away from you. Mm. And I felt myself closing over time. And I'm, and I'm wondering, is there, 
is there a way that we can include me more? You know, this, this notion of clarity plus inclusion, I would like to feel included, not all the time, but, but more, mm. how would that be for you, honey? Mm. Like that's how she can give a very clean expression of, uh, of what she's wanting. So that's the, 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 just to summarize the, the question that you had of what can the, you know, the art, the, the asshole narcissist do it's, Come into the relational field more. Build your awareness of the relational impact of your behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, that's going to help grow you into a more holistic man. I love it. I love it so much. I have one last question. <laughs> so why do you think it takes so long for men to start this work? Like, why do you think there's this resistance with getting help with this sort of stuff, usually until it's too late? Yeah. That's the sad part of it. Yeah, that that men need catastrophe catastrophe to really change. And um, I did. Mm. Yeah. And you know, you you eventually it leads to a good place. But as you said, some it's often too late. And and this this woman that you've been with, or this person, it doesn't even need, need to be a woman, but you know, your partner and you've you've loved them for a long time presumably and you wanted it to be better and you just couldn't figure out how and it and it, and it crumbles um so yeah you're right it usually is too late and it takes catastrophe for us um and i think yeah i just i think that the best way you know if we're speaking to the women now it's like how what's the best way to get your man to do this it's like start to share your hurt early and lovingly and relationally early and let them know how serious it is before your heart goes away, before you feel tempted to even turn to another man, which I think is more the extreme, but it happens. But before that, you close your heart and you harden to them. And it's like, don't let it get to that. Mm. Don't let it get to that, you know, express yourself. And, and unfortunately, you know, we respond to catastrophe, but we can also respond to, to loving um, encouragement. And sometimes we're a little slower, but if, it, if you do the, it's kind of the iron fist in the velvet glove. You know, it's like you s express it lovingly, but you let the man know, this is serious. This is the kind of thing that makes me want to leave. Mm -hmm. And it's that serious. And I need you to take it seriously or else, you know, yeah. I don't know where this could go. Yeah. I'm not sure that was the original question, but I sort of morphed into ways to, you know, to wake men up. And, and hopefully, you know, the, the, myself, there's lots of other people doing men's work. Hopefully they're starting to become um, some momentum where it becomes more of the norm because it's not been the norm. The norm's like, I'm going to shut down. I'm going to handle things. I'm going to go lone wolf and mm. come into community with other men who are doing this work. That's the biggest thing that'll open you up because you realize there's other sincere powerful men who are trying to do this work mm -hmm. and that actually makes guys step into it and do it so i say men you know do it together with other men you can get involved in all kinds of, of men's groups and things like that um you're not in this alone guys you're not in this alone even though it feels that way there's other men out there doing this work and you can do it with them it's so good yeah. So good. Thank you so much. Oh, I wish we could keep going. I have so much more to say, but I know that we're short on time now. So for those of you listening, I 1000% recommend to get GS's book, The Masculine in Relationship, and also this book on embodiment. I the art of embodiment for men as well. I haven't read that one yet, but the masculine relationship has helped so many relationships of just people that I know. <laughs> so I cannot imagine how many people that you've helped GS. So thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, for those of you don't, who don't know, um, where can they find your book? Where can they find you? What yeah. have you got going on? Let us know. Yeah, gsyoungblood.com. You can find um, lots of things, including information on one-on-one -on -one coaching, as well as uh, I have courses. I have some video courses and I have an embodiment course that's there and, and a couple of others. So I really do encourage the men, get the embodiment book and then do the course. Like that's the best way to really deepen uh, your work around the masculine core. Um, GS Youngblood, M-I-R is on Instagram. So you can see a great sampling of my, my work and my philosophies on Instagram. And then 
Um, Check out the website. Uh, I do have a, uh, a workshop coming up. It's a workshop on on bringing more dark sexual energy into your relationship. Ooh. And it's it's a topic that a lot of my guys are asking for. And so I'll, I'll be offering a workshop. So I just suggest getting on the mailing list on my website to, to be notified when that's ready to go. Amazing. I'll link all of that in the show notes. Thank you so much. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on here. I so like, I so want to have you on again for this dark, a dark masculine conversation. That would be so freaking amazing. I'm like, we should have gone into that. (laughs) So good. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) Awesome. All right. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next episode.